This year, I've set myself a painting challenge. When I last went to Warhammer World, I got myself a box of Space Marine Intercessors, and I'm going to be painting the 10 models from this box in 10 different colour schemes. The 9 Loyalist Legions from the Horus Heresy, and my childhood homebrew chapter, the Redemptionists. I'm also going to be painting those models in 10 different artistic styles, some of which are more ambitious than others. But here's the kicker. At the start of each month, I am going to spin a wheel to randomly select one of the colour schemes, one of the Legions. And I'm then going to spin another wheel to randomly select one of the artistic styles. I then have a month to paint that marine in that style and make a video about it. As such, this is going to be the first video of a 10 part series on this YouTube channel. And without any further ado, I should probably find out what I'm going to be painting this January. Here we go. Feel like you can't get much more classic than that. <laughs> Okay, I'm happy with that. And now let's find out the style. <laughs> oh, oh God. Why did it have to be NMM? That's like one of the hardest ones. Oh, okay. NMM refers to non-metallic metals. The idea of painting metallic substances like silvers and golds without using metallic paints like lead belcher or auric armor, and instead painting silver with whites and greys and gold with oranges and yellows and browns. Normally in this series, I think I'll do a little section on what is the style and quite why does it work and what do I need to try and do on the model. But to be honest, NMM has been done to death on YouTube. There are so many videos you could watch. For example, check this one out from Miniac about what is NMM and how you do it. Suffice to say, I'm just going to try and apply these techniques to as many surfaces on my Ultramarine as possible. I started out by assembling an intercessor with white tack to get a pose and then removed as many mold lines as I could, though I am still bad at this, and then broke the model down into sub-assemblies, which I primed black and then gave a zenithal highlight of white ink. Two things. Firstly, if I was to do this project again, I wouldn't use so many sub-assemblies for reasons that I'll get into. And secondly, turns out filming painting is really hard, so I'm I'm still learning how to do this. There will be sections of this video though where there are just going to be photos. Sorry. Being the largest part of the model, I decided to tackle the armor first, and I set out a palette of Necron Abyss, Macrag Blue, Hoeth Blue, Fenrisian Grey, and White Scar. Later on in the process, I replaced the White Scar with Vallejo model color white. The armor got a coat everywhere of Macrag Blue, and then I blocked in where I thought the highlights should go. I think there are three things to making NMM really pop, the first of which is having consistent lighting across the whole model, and highlights that make sense with a single source of light. Or in some techniques, multiple sources of light. I think I did this all right, but not great. I tended to default to just doing zenithal highlighting, which isn't the worst thing you could do for NMM, but I wasn't really thinking critically enough about which parts of the model were like a sphere and which were like a cylinder, and so how the light would bounce off of those. I blended from the base coat to the highlight as best I could, and gave extreme highlights to any edges that I thought would catch the light. I think that's the second thing that really makes NMM pop, is having really high contrast, extreme highlights on rays edges, especially as I decided my model was going to be quite reflective but not chrome-like. That meant that where the extreme highlights lay in the mid-tone or shadows, they really, really popped and I think looked really good on the model. With the highlights done, I then moved on to the ground reflections and the darker colours. And by the same logic, I figured that this shouldn't be a really sharp divide, but relatively high contrast and a relatively sharp line. The shadow colour was provided by a mix of Necron Abyss, Macrag Blue and a bit of Mournfang Brown. And for the parts of the model where it was reflecting the ground immediately below, such as the bottom of the legs, for example, I added a bit more Mournfang Brown into the mix and glazed down to that. The overall effect wasn't very smooth though, and that's a bit of a problem because I think the third thing you need to to do to make NMM work is to have very smooth blends. So to try and distract from that, I added loads of battle damage. Randomly placed streaks of the dark shadow colour and then on the edge of the scratch that was away from where the light source was, adding a streak of the highlight colour to really sell the depth of a scratch. The gold on the chest was a mix of Mournfang Brown, Stegodon Green, Ungor Flesh and Flash Gits Yellow, highlighting with more yellow and more white mixed in. The highlights for this were kind of randomly placed because I didn't know what I was doing, but it kind of worked, I think. <laughs> 
I then went in with some darker brown to make the shadows really pop, and then glazed in a bit of colour with the contrast paint Dark Oath Flesh. If I'm honest, the gold is the part of this model that I'm the least happy with. I just don't have a good recipe for NMM gold yet. If you know of one, please let me know. Once the main body was done, I then put that to one side and basically repeated the same steps for the other components, starting with the arms. The arms, however, were holding a bolter, the gunmetal of which I painted entirely using whites and greys. This was a drawback of doing NMM on an almost entirely blue model. Normally when you paint silver, you add a little bit of blue, you kind of glaze that into the shadows. But I thought that would be too much blue in this case. and. As a result, I think the gunmetal looks a little bit chalky. Lesson learned for next time. I decided to make the casing of the bolter red in like a classic scheme, and that was painted with corn red glazing up to Evil Sun Scarlet, and then edge highlighting with Evil Sun Scarlet and a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange. Once the arms were largely painted, I gave them a coat of matte varnish and then popped them in the freezer to make the super glue brittle, popped them off of their support, a paper clip, and then attached them to the body. And it was at this point that I painted in the ground reflections on the arms. The reason I did this here was to try and keep them as consistent as possible with the body, and I didn't quite know what position the arms were going to be when they were on the model, so I figured it was best to do this now, and I think that was the right call. To be honest, I think the highlights would have looked better if I'd actually just painted the arms whilst they were on the body as well. Lesson learned for next time, do fewer sub-assemblies when doing NMM. With that done, it was basically the same steps again, just for the other components, so for the backpack and for the helmet. The lenses on the helmet were painted in the same way that the red on the bolter was painted, though I did glaze down to a black in the top corners and then added a pin highlight of pure white to just sell the reflection. And then it was onto the base, which I painted with Sterling mud, painting around where the feet were going to go, and then filled in the gaps with a dark brown, glazed in some colour with dark oath flesh, and then gave the whole thing a dry brush with flayed one flesh. A few citadel grass tufts, a coat of glossy black around the rim, and the model was ready to be stuck to the base. Which just left putting on the decals, which I did using Microsol and Microset, and I forgot to film, sorry, and then adding some last minute battle damage and touching up and tying everything together, and... I painted my first model of this challenge. This was a really interesting learning experience. I feel like I got over some of my fear of NMM. It's easier than you think it is, and it really just comes down to consistent lighting and reflections. Something I learned is definitely easier without sub-assemblies. This was a model that I would sit down and work on for a couple of hours at a time, and then walk away, and then maybe the next day do a couple of minutes on, and Overall, I think the process took about 15 hours-ish, and if I was to do this again, I'd definitely be able to do it faster. I've, I've learned a lot of sort of the techniques from doing this guy. Though the other thing I learned was to be more disciplined with where I put my paint on the wet palette. This was what the wet palette looked like at the end of the process, and as you can imagine, finding exactly the right blue tone to add to the armour if I wanted to touch something up was actually really hard. So, need to be more disciplined and only have small piles of paint. Overall, I'm really happy with the end result. This was my first ever Ultramarine, so I can say that I ticked that box, and I really enjoyed the process. This was a challenge that I really, really enjoyed, and I hope you enjoyed watching. Now we've just got to find out what I'm going to be painting next month, and in what style. I'm going to be painting... My homebrew chapter, The Redemptionists. Okay. And I'm going to be painting it in the style of... Oh, okay, uh, yeah, I can see that working. Never done this one before. <laughs> <laughs>